Gurudev, it is really very interesting that you're coming to Sofia from South America through Germany in a week, exactly at the time that we had the peak of our political crisis. And tell me, first of all, what can we do, normal people? If the political leadership is in a crisis, if the political class and the political leaders are not adequate to take the adequate decisions on the very tough problems, so what can we normal people do in a situation like this? First of all, normal people in a democracy has all the power. We must express our voices, express our concern, number one. This is part of democracy. Second is, um, I'll be talking to some of the political leaders as well. Um, what is important here is nation first people first, and then parties, and then other things should come. So somehow everyone will have to come together. I think from every crisis something good will come. I always believe that. So with this crisis I am sure something better will happen to Bulgaria. Yes, you always speak about Bulgaria and hi. So what do you feel now coming to Bulgaria? Bulgaria, very good. It's very nice. Before I go to India, this will be the last country I'll be visiting. I've been on tour for now more than three and a half months throughout the world for the message of peace. Um, you know, world is going through a big crisis. This mental health issue is very, very big. We just saw today uh, that the mental health drug is the most sold drug in the whole in the past two years. So post pandemic we need to have robust mental health number one and then hope. I want to kindle the hope back again. Things will be all right. Today because of the recession and all the challenges people are feeling hopeless. Now we have to come out of that hopeless situation. But everything is uh, built with us, human beings on earth. What kind of sins we have done, people on earth? See, in instead of looking into the problem, I think we should think of solutions. Problem means we are looking in the back. Solution is we are going forward. I always believe that. We should think of what is the solution for the present crisis, how we can make a country self-sufficient, self-reliant, self-reliant in food, self-reliant in energy. If we can have these two self-reliance, nobody can um, bring down our economy. But is it possible in a world when everybody depends on everybody else? when all of us are unity in diversity and diversity in unity. This ancient Indian doctrine is valid very much today. So... No, of course, we live in a globalized world where everybody is, dep the whole world is dependent on each other. But as far as possible, if we make the food security in our own nation robust, that is, we grow what food we need, number one. Second, use alternative source of energy, like solar energy, wind energy. We have a lot of wind in Bulgaria. <laughs> so with wind and solar powers, we can also, you know, make ourselves so self-reliant so that economy doesn't crash very fast. Should a person uh, for himself think of self-reliance? If a group of people in a nation should be self-reliant? <coughs> Individuals should also strive at it, but it may not be totally possible. But it is possible for nations to be more self-reliant. It is possible. But it takes a sustained effort over a period of time. 
It can't happen overnight. You have volunteers all around the world and all around the uh, conflict places and uh, disasters, uh, natural disasters. Uh, you have so many people in Bulgaria, thousands of people. Don't you think it's time to discuss in the United Nations yoga to become a compulsory subject in all schools all around the world? I would love that to happen. But you know, being in that field, I cannot emphasize that. It should come from the general public. Uh, but anyway, uh, yoga has been recognized in the United Nations and we have uh, International Yoga Day for the eighth, eighth year now and it has yielded well. 2.3 billion people in the world, nearly one third of the population are practicing it. Should be six, seven billion million. Mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> what is the message you are bringing to, uh, tomorrow to us? this time? You know, I don't uh, prepare my messages earlier. Tomorrow, I'll give my whatever comes to me at that time. <laughs> and what could yoga help a man today in this absolutely complicated and full of technological boom and material boom and spiritual negligence? So what can yoga help us Tomorrow, today? Uh, first of all, we shouldn't see that yoga is contrary to technological boom. They complement. Technological boom is very good. Economic boom is very good. Along with yoga, it makes you feel better. See, you, you will put to good use the technology if your mind is okay. If your mind is all distorted, it's like having a nice bed, but suffering from insomnia. You can't sleep. You know, in the same way, I would say uh, spiritual wisdom is always complementary to um, material growth and prosperity. It's not against it, number one. Second, what we need today is uh, resilience. When the challenges come, you should be able to be resilient. You should be able to find the solution. And another aspect that is happening today is depression and aggression. And yoga, meditation can help people to get out of depression and get out of the aggressive mindset. So your communication becomes better with everybody. What is the greatest challenge for the world today, for all the world? Uh, today the whole world is facing mental health crisis. There is depression. One in every four person in Europe is getting depressed. That's too much. And uh, the suicidal tendencies have increased. Every 45 seconds, one person is taking their life away. And meditation and Sudarshan Kriya has the answer for it. People who are in verge of suicidal tendencies, they get over it. And people who are mentally depressed, they are simply getting uh, over that uh, challenge without medication. So that's why I feel that um, we need to take care of our wellness, the well-being. Without well-being, wealth means nothing. What is Bulgaria for you? It's part of my family. <laughs> it's part of my global family. I have beautiful people here. And Bulgaria is, has done one product from our... Queen Bite is a product which people all over the Europe, all over the world are liking it. So our volunteers, our teachers are doing tremendous uh, work here, helping people out in the crisis. Also when Ukraine uh, refugees were uh, in big trouble, people from here, our teacher Constantin, Sana, they all went there to help them out. So 
Bulgaria is playing a very active role in relief work and in the international arena as well. And whenever we had World Culture Festival, we had one of the famous singer, musician from here come and perform, whether it was Berlin or India. So Bulgarian art and culture has always been part of our uh, international celebrations. So still you're thinking very positively and care about Bulgaria. Yeah, I'm realistic. <laughs> India is one of the four quickest economies. It has almost a billion and 500 million people. According to my idea, all of them genetically educated, in difference with us white people. So we what kind of message can only India give to today's world, the microcosmos which gathers within itself all the universe? India's message has always been of peace. And India has always stood for um, spiritual strength, inner spiritual strength. Our uh, father of nation was Mahatma Gandhi himself was a very spiritual being. Uh, he was uh, involved in spirituality from the very uh, beginning of the movement in India. Number one. Second is, uh, today with the um, leadership of our current Prime Minister, India has done tremendous progress. Now we are becoming self-reliant in many, many areas. See, you will see in the world of nations, India's inflation is zero. IMF has said that India has managed it so well that inflation is almost, almost zero in India. So um, India's uh, crisis management is very good. In these moments of uh, whether it's COVID or after COVID, the war situation, India has uh, done its best. It has balanced the power as well. It has remained a neutral to the players. At the same time, India has also uh, shown to the world it is possible to be self-reliant in technology, in food security. And for vaccine, India has supplied vaccine to 100 countries around the world, 100 plus countries around the world, free of cost. So India has played its very prominent role, the global leader now. I think this is the only country that can do it. Once upon a time, maybe 20 years ago in Trivandrum, I asked the director of Trivandrum Rocket Center, why don't you sell weapons and things so you can solve all your problems? He said, no, Daniela, this is not our uh, philosophy. We are exporting philosophy. So don't you think now in this absolutely crazy world, India has to increase the export of philosophy all around the world? Uh, yeah, I would say this philosophy belongs to every part of the world. So every country should just start to own it, that's all. Okay? Thank you so much.